Do we have a fancy introduction? Yes, I'll take care of that. Looking good, Ian, so <laughs> we can start. All right, so let's get it. Uh, let's get those introductions over with. <laughs> uh, so hi, everyone, and welcome to Zero Park's uh, Ask Me Anything session. Uh, my name is Bart, and I'm the head of marketing at Zero Park. And with me today, there are a couple of affiliate marketing superstars. Uh, First off, uh, a man who made millions of running guts, uh, a true community guru, and most recently an author of Amazon bestseller, Attila Audrey. Welcome, Attila. Hey, thank you so much. Hey, guys, how's it going? Our second guest uh, is an expert in e-commerce, new trends, skin product ads. He's been touring around the world, uh, sharing his expertise in affiliate marketing. And today he's joining our AMA session. That's Ian Fernando. How are you doing, Ian? Doing good. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome. Uh, so the AMA session uh, is all about getting answers to your questions uh, from our experts here. So uh, all of you joining us live now, uh, please uh, start submitting your questions through the Q&A box in Zoom. So that should be somewhere at the bottom of your screen, the Q&A section. Uh, we'll get, cover those questions and uh, over the course of the upcoming hour or so. And uh, just as we await first questions, uh, let me open up with a little warm up, uh, Ian and Attila. Uh, so this is mostly about uh, media buying during the holidays. So during the holiday season. So I want to ask you personally, what what are your media buying plans for the next month? Uh, and what are you going to focus on and why? Maybe Attila can start in this. Me first? <laughs> okay. I used to be always going first, you know. <laughs> Well, this month is actually Christmas is coming up, so people should already be doing, you know, if they're if you're doing e-com, you should be already in the swing of things because there is shipping times. But if you're not doing e-com, then I think sweeps are going to be doing good dating because people tend to feel lonely during the holidays. So that can be a really good angle. I know in e-com, especially if you can get it to the customer before Christmas, then listicles are really popular right now like holiday styled listicles because people always need ideas for gifts. So that's huge. Uh, financial investments are popular because what could be better than making money, you know, for Christmas. And especially now that Bitcoin price is booming. Everybody's rich. My, even my garbage man was asking like, Oh, where do I buy Bitcoin? I'm like, Oh no, here we go again. You know, like a couple of years ago, like it was like, people you would never expect like the cleaning lady asking oh my god oh my god what is this bitcoin you know and then like here we go again like the masses are coming in so that's a lot of good opportunities especially on push because there you don't have to worry about getting your ass banned like on facebook so you can easily you know like uh, promote more aggressive style listicles and financial offers and like dating offers as well as sweeps like i know iphone 12 offers are doing super good so like, why not get, you know, like a free iPhone for Christmas, you know, just fill this out kind of thing, win, you know, like that's actually really good. So I see these offers doing well uh, this holiday season. And uh, yeah, Ian, what about you, buddy? Uh, talking about Facebook ban, I was just telling these guys uh, just before we got on, I just got an account ban <laughs> just because of an issue of payment. But in any case, uh, I totally agree with uh, what Attila just says. Um, one thing, though, uh, I do want to add on to it is surveys. The surveys during the holidays, especially the people that want money, tend to do way better, than, in my opinion, way better than sweeps during this holiday, uh, just because they'll actually get cash back from like survey offers from like SurveyMonkey and, and, and that aspect, right? So those things are actually pretty quick uh, in those uh, retrospect. So uh, everything Attila said is I agree, which is the addition of the survey offers specifically. You know, and those will work on, I've done with uh, uh, push uh, and pop, not so much on pop, but definitely more so on push if anything. And um, I have another good idea actually. Uh, Zero Park has something called redirect traffic where you can actually steal the top brand names for e-com offers and target them and then get paid, you know, like that's actually a really good trick that works. So that's also hot this holiday season, like gather the most, like go onto Amazon and see what are the most popular products mm -hmm. being sold and then sign up and become an, a, like an Amazon affiliate 
and just fucking run it through a lander and hide your referral and then make some money, you know, targeting stuff that people are looking for using redirect traffic on Zero Park. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, actually, uh, domain redirect has been uh, probably the number one source at Zero Park uh, currently for, especially for e-commerce. So good advice from Attila here. So we have a, uh, a bunch of questions already uh, spread over the chat as well as the Q&A section. So uh, best to stick to Q&A, but we'll cover both. Uh, so first of all, maybe let's start with quick greetings. So Attila Alexander says hi from Germany. Uh, we have a Polish guy, Adam, uh, in the attendance. Hey, Adam. Uh, Luke says I'm the prettiest, so I'm, I'm going to agree with that. <laughs> uh, thanks, Luke. Uh, and okay. Okay, but with this, uh, let's let's start with the questions. Uh, so, Anonymous actually is asking, what is the best way of promotion? So this is quite a general question, but uh, the question is about the really, really effective way. So maybe let me just narrow it down for, for the Anonymous here. Currently, number one way of getting money through ads for you. I mean, you want a really simple, you really want a really strategic way to it's quite a, a vague answer a vague question so we can go general and simple i guess i mean the simplest way is either buy the cheapest cpcs you can with an offer that that pays out you know it's just a truly arbitrage way of how to run traffic you know what i mean i remember when i did it with google i would just bid on keywords back in the day and just like justin bieber and i would just get ringtones uh to convert pretty quickly Right nowadays, that obviously wouldn't work on Facebook or Google or any of the tier ones, but you would have to do that with pops, interstitials, uh, push, uh, in those aspects because CPMs are definitely much, much lower for sure. Um, I really don't know how to tackle this question because it's either you, you pick an offer from any network, right? Um, I would suggest, like until we we're saying in the beginning, Anything with sweeps, you know, they're, they range from $2. And a lot, and the crazy part, this year alone, a lot of networks have shifted to just sweeps and offering almost uh, three types of uh, payouts for these sweeps too. So they go, they can go from $2 to $15 to all the way up to $35, you know, uh, on these sweeps offers. Um, but then there's a strategic long way where you can actually use cheap traffic to strategize your e-com offers by pixelating, proper pixelating. Um, could the advertiser don't give you the, the actual uh, uh, pixels, so you have to create your own. But it's a, it's a huge strategy, so I just want to get the understanding of where, uh, what kind of traffic, and how to how that question wants to be answered. So. Okay, uh, Attila, and for you, number one, if you had to just simple answer, short answer for this question. If I had to just make money and I had no money. Yeah. Okay, well, I would definitely start a service business then because then that's guaranteed money. I wouldn't do affiliate marketing because affiliate marketing. Oh, really? Is Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Like, man, I, I push people away from that. I always tell them, I always teach affiliate marketing before seriously? anything else. That's yeah. so weird because I started in uh, 2008, and the first thing that I did was I started building blogs and I was networking with people. And then people were saying like, who wrote the text on your blogs? Cause they were kick ass. I'm like, I, well, I did. And then that's how my first company called Content Pimp started. And I started writing uh, content for people which allowed me to earn money to dive deep into affiliate marketing. Uh, because awesome. I mean, you're using your skill set technically. You know yeah, I mean? because like, advantage. people, yeah. some people are logical, some people are creative, right? So yeah. I recognized early on that I can fucking spit out so much kick-ass articles super fast, and it was like a hobby, you know, it was like a pleasure, and I made money from it. I knew that if I write ten articles for a guy, I'm gonna get paid a hundred dollars, you know. So it was a really kick-ass way to. Uh, to make to start make money online and in the process build out my blog network get them ranking and then later when uh, google started banning the hard i mean the easy seo techniques then i switched to paid ads and i remember my first campaign it was actually on um, on traffic junkie and exoclick and i lost my shirt i just I ran a Ron campaign. Yeah, and, yeah, like, 
it blew one thousand dollars in like less than an hour i was like holy fuck you know like what the hell so yeah that's my answer basically uh, the best thing to do is to start something where you definitely get paid and then slowly get your feet wet into affiliate marketing unless you have five thousand dollars to start with right away and don't care if you lose it you know then it's a different game Bonjour. 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 <laughs> hey, uh, can you? That? How come we have so many Ians? Yeah. <laughs> what the <laughs> hackers? Hackers. <laughs> okay. It should be good now. Let me just look okay. this. Okay. Okay. Mm. Next question. The next question is from another anonymous here, uh, probably the last one here. Uh, so I guess this is more about uh, Zero Park, uh, asking about the service and full campaign setups and mentorship. So just to quickly answer that uh, from my end, uh, that's uh, we do not offer uh, like complete uh, service, just just that buys, buys campaign, does campaigns for you, uh, but we do offer two week mentorship program if you sign up, so we have onboarding specialists taking care of you, telling you what to do and, and, and advising you uh, which direction to go, help you set up with everything and so on. So that's, that's another question done. Let me maybe uh, move to the uh, chat section for a little bit. Uh, so from Cameron, a uh, question from Cameron, how many emails does it take to get people to buy? Interesting question. Which one of you uh, did more email marketing? Uh, I do email. I, I guess I do email internal lead gen, I guess, for affiliate stuff. Um, I mean, you need a lot of leads. So you have to, this is how you have to picture it. Uh, for every 100, one person will probably convert, right? So it's usually 1%. But that tends to shrink down for every open to click through and then converting, right? So you can take a look at your stats into four, as, uh, four aspects. Sending the leads, which is let's say 100 leads. Uh, and the secondary aspect, which is um, open, right? Let's say it might be 30 to 40. Uh, maybe your new leads are probably up to 60 to 70% open rates. And then from those open rates, you have the CTRs of the email, right? And those can be really, 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 really varies on how good your copy is in the email and how consistent it can be. So that can be 20% to down to literally maybe 5%. And then it's 1% of those, right? So those measurements are pretty, you have to be really, really consistent on generating X amount of leads. So the strategy you have to really think about is how much does each lead cost, right? So if 100 people came in and one converted at $5, or uh, I'll kind of make this easy, at uh, $1, then your leads are, are what, 10 cents, yeah, 10 cents. And then you'd have to find uh, more leads at a CPC or a CPA of under 10 cents somehow, you know what I mean? But over time that does change and fluctuate, right? So you have to really, really understand those four metrics. Usually for me, it's uh, CTR to uh, conversion just because I tend to think that's more real time. That's how the affiliate thinks. But over longevity, the open rates actually work better to, um, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the open rates actually work better for me uh, over the long term, just because now I can be like, the consistency of an open rate of 60% has pro provided me a 10% conversion, right? Just because the CTR and the email does change and fluctuate over time. And I kind of don't use that metric in a 90 day window, for example. You know, but that's the only difference with email. Um, mm -hmm. There's obviously two mindsets for email and direct response marketers where one dollar goes out, a dollar fifty has to come back. Whereas email, you really have you really waste a dollar and hope to get that one dollar fifty 90 days later, you know, from that one one lead. So it really, really varies. I think that's an exhaustive answer. So uh, maybe let's let's move on to another another topic. A uh, question from Abdullah to Attila uh, about carrier billing. Uh, carrier billing offers, uh, are they good for push and pour pop? They are very good actually for push and pops. I mean, if you fire up a spy tool, you're gonna see a ton of sweepstakes 
offers, which actually are many of them are on carrier carrier billing, while the other ones are on like the CC billing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, carrier billing used to be better years ago because there has been a lot of uh, regulation with the carriers these days. So I find that due to rise in CPM costs and conversion rates, like not being what they were like five years ago, it's better to run the high payout, like credit card offers, like for iPhone versus the low payout carrier billing offers. But I mean, if you can get cheap traffic, that is good. Then carrier billing still works, but there's not that much opportunity. Like in the past, I know how it works. Like some big advertisers give exclusivity for one type of low budget carrier that they open just to build the shit out of people. And um, only like their top affiliates get it. So what they do is they make these discount special like phone companies, people sign up and then they open up carrier billing there and then they shut it down after kind of thing. Like, uh, so it's an opportunity that opens and closes. And the, like, if you're not connected and you don't, you're not like someone that is known to do a lot of like volume then you don't even have access to these ones. So definitely credit card, high payout offers are the best that I personally like to recommend because they're accessible on Gotza, on Click Dealer, on all of the popular CPA networks, basically. Right. Uh, Ian, want to expand on that? Yeah, exactly what he basically said. I mean, it's really not much to really add to that. <laughs> All right, all right. Okay, so let's move to another question uh, from our friend Luke. Uh, Black Friday says we're down this year. Uh, economy isn't great. Are you guys doing anything to drive up conversion for with uh, people with less money? That's an excellent question. Ian? Hey, when there's not much money, then what do people do? They try and they go to the casino, right? Like, I mean, the target audience of casinos is usually people who don't have money because these people want the easy way out. So they're even willing to borrow to wager it and win. So the offers that provide them a chance to earn money are definitely a good kind of offers to target these people with, for example, like the financial offers from networks like Supreme Media and the casino offers like from a casino rewards like Leo Vegas and other casinos. Those are also good. And those kind of offers where the uh, visitor doesn't really have to uh, give their credit card, uh, they can convert for the affiliate for free, like games and, you know, like SOI and DOI and like other kinds of lead gen. Those are also potentially good from an affiliate standpoint that uh, these people that don't have money might go for. Mm hmm interesting yeah i mean i think it'd be more so to do exactly what you said but i think i what i tend to do in my with my campaigns is to create like a like storyline narrative like right now what i do is for some e-com stuff right i put them in a, in, a, in a fake false webinar right and i just put them through youtube templated uh webinar series and with a call to action in them right so then this gives them a chance of a learning aspect put them into a um, sense of security, gives them comfortability with the product, right? And then throughout the product review or product webinar series I do through my email, um, they tend to buy, right? Or they actually tie take action within in between of that aspect. So uh, to try to get people to buy and convince them is definitely what I just said is convincing them. So I try to educate and give value Whereas uh, instead of trying to take a direct response route, which is obviously like the old school way of marketing. Well, I mean, technically not, but it's like the old way of doing it. But now you really have to force feed people uh, info uh, that they see uh, fit for them, right? Mm -hmm. A question about Zero Park, but I'm gonna let uh, Attila answer that. Uh, it's coming from Drew. Uh, what's the best way to diversify with Zero Park? 
Actually, I have way. a lot of experience with our platform, so I'm a good. <laughs> yeah, I know this really well because we run a lot of traffic to Zero Park. For example, like the step, the first thing that we do when we are trying a new vertical is um, we run a RON campaign. But even in, I, I call a RON campaign basically when I hit up Bart or my account manager, I'm like, give me the best top 10 sources for this niche. And then I make one campaign and I throw everything in there. And after I spend 500 or a thousand, depending, like if I, if whatever, what my data, like if I'm not losing money, then I'll spend more to get more data. And then I separate the, uh, the sources that are doing good into their own campaigns. And then I start breaking it down. Like I break it down iPhone. I make a campaign for that on a specific source. And then I make another one for Android and I make one for desktop because the bids and the ads that perform, they, uh, they perform differently depending on the device. And then I dive into d- dive in deep and I see within a source, which targets give me the lowest CPA. Like I set up these automatic rules. Like if it spends X amount, then turn off that target. Basically how uh, zero park the push stuff works is a source is basically the uh, think of it like a group of websites. And then the targets are like different websites inside that group. So for example, I was just doing a, uh, like a lead gen campaign for my, uh, the new book that I wrote that's on Amazon. And I learned that in a certain group, some targets did really well. Well, the uh, CPA was low, but there were some shit ones where it was really high. So I knew my numbers, so I knew which ones I had to go for. So I would take the very best that I found and I would move them also into their own target campaigns. So it's all about breaking it down and then feeling out on that source, what kind of ads do the best, you know, and what kind of landing page flow does the, like you can really go granular and it helps reduce the, um, the CPA or the acquisition cost. Like for me, the lower, the better, like that's the goal. So the only way to do it is to go super granular, but that requires a lot of money. Usually for affiliate stuff where you don't have the whole flow, like with my book, it's like a hundred page long funnel, like how Ian's doing long-term. Like my book is actually a hundred page long funnel that is funneling people into my partners, uh, also our different brands, the forum, everything. So, you know, like from every single place, there's some kind of uh, like a monetary connection and breaking it down and analyzing the data and knowing, you know, which gets the highest CTRs, like Ian was saying, is super important. And that's how basically I scale it out on Zero Park because then I can really maximize the budget and get more spend out without actually increasing my CPM, decreasing my CPA by super laser targeting it down. Yeah, and, and just to follow up and, and add to this, uh, if, you, if you want uh, more tips on, on Zero Park, uh, head over to imatila.com. I'm affiliate, <laughs> Uplift as well, or Zero Park blog. This, these are all the places where you can find plenty of guides uh, written by, by experts like Attila here uh, or our team inside Park with our internal knowledge on the platform uh, where you can see all the steps, all the guidelines and, and strategies uh, on Zero Park. So plenty of uh, learn to print, plenty to learn from that as well. Okay, let's move on to another question, but I'm going to put this in bulk because uh, uh, Cameron has been asking a lot of questions about Zero Park. So let's stick to this. Uh, so let, let me just... Uh, call out the questions that he, he asked. Uh, so what platforms are you doing pop on? Uh, would you recommend Zero Park? Uh, is Zero Park working well with uh, ClickBank offers? Uh, and uh, so, so some background come around as well that he's currently doing services uh, and wants to move to affiliate marketing with, uh, and, and with looking for a uh, good traffic source uh, that's cheaper than Google because he's paying a lot uh, on Google for clicks, also asking about the rates on Zero Park. So yes, uh, definitely Zero Park is uh, much uh, cheaper than Google. Uh, so Atia, do you want to uh, follow up on, on Zero Park here? 
Yeah, like basically every traffic source has its place. Uh, I honestly don't see any like much, uh, uh, what is it, ClickBank stuff on zero part. Uh, basically, ClickBank, I don't think works really good on zero part because zero part is mostly like for offers which have broad appeal, whereas ClickBank, I know they have Neutron Health and all that stuff, but ClickBank is highly specialized, even niche. So ClickBank, I wouldn't do on zero part. But like dating is really good for zero park and clicks are super cheap and they work super well. Like if um, if you want to know what works on a traffic source, you have to use a spy tool and uh, then just look uh, and select like the traffic source zero park in the spy tool and then sort and see which uh, kind of uh, ads are the most popular like they have the option sort by most popular or receive the most traffic and that way you can personally see what kind of niches and offer types are doing well in the traffic so you really have to match the traffic to the offer otherwise you could be throwing you know like hundreds or thousands of dollars and not really seeing any sales and that's a real sure bet of going out of business super fast mm -hmm. Uh, I, ha I have a couple of questions now for Ian. Uh, so Adam is asking about uh, starting in affiliate marketing. He's saving 1K monthly uh, and wants to invest that in affiliate marketing. Would that be enough as a newbie? And there is also a question from Dennis. Uh, what's the lowest, uh, lowest budget suggestion to start with push ads? So maybe you can answer those in bulk, Ian. Uh, I mean, 1K, I mean, you can definitely start just to get the experience. Um, I mean, there are times where your probably won't be profitable, especially if you have to do a lot of segmenting, uh, turning off targets or sources, especially on pops or push. Those are the traffic sources where I'd probably start just because they're under like 15 cents or even under 5 cents, depending where it is, uh, where you're buying from. Um, but you also have to prepare and set your mindset that you that you're going to lose a thousand dollars. Like if you have the potential of losing that thousand dollars, right. Um, as long as you probably take that cash flow and, and learn from it, like make sure you're tracking set up properly, make sure you have the right offer, make sure you're talking to your affiliate manager and make sure you're getting your ECPMs right from your affiliate manager and all that and understanding that and then, uh, reinvesting maybe the third month, that other thousand dollars, maybe you might be profitable. Right. Um, so it really, really varies on how you want to view, cash or, or, or money, you know what I mean? There are some people that are very, very attached to money and they get very, very emotional. Whereas me, I am I can pretty much risk it all and eh, I'll go back on the street for a day or two and get it back, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's very, very different. The attitude uh, in affiliate marketing is you have to be able to lose a lot of money. Like there are times where if I've lost literally like $7,000 a day and then I went to depression Right. But for the thousand dollars, you can definitely start on these cheap traffic sources and pretty much understand what's going on. Since this is only a one to one ratio of a CPC to a click, rather, whereas Google, Facebook, um, native, you have to look at widgets, you have to look at audiences, you have to look at the algos, what algos is happening. This is the easiest way to actually really, really start. All right. Um, and then what was the second one? Uh, the lowest budget to run push ups. Uh, the lowest the budget, I mean, most, I think Zero Park has like a hundred dollar deposit on there, right? Sure has. Just start off. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of uh, push pop networks that are even going, that goes lower, almost like a 50 to just start, but you really can't do much with $50, yeah. you know what I mean? So you'll get a lot of impression and you'll be like, oh, I lost money and I don't see any clicks. Then you're probably not, then you, you're losing the experience of trying to analyze your landing pages. You're losing the experience of trying to analyze the, the target sources. You're losing a lot of experience on trying to figure out, hey, was my creative worth it right so these are the, a lot of things that you really need to understand that comes with spending uh money you know what I mean? mm -hmm. so yeah i would add to that just to on from our experience as, as you mentioned ian uh we the minimum first deposit is 200 at zero park but we really advise uh to spend at least three to five hundred dollars to really get a hang up uh your first like push campaign to to, to see what sources are working well what you're doing wrong to let the creatives live for a little bit and, and to, to get a chance to actually swap swap up the creatives as well, because that's that's a very big part of, of rank push campaigns as well. Okay, uh, question from Andrew. Um, 
do you see any quality changes in pop under traffic the last two three years oh yeah again worse jesus <laughs> Atiola, do you see any, any changes in the quality of pops? Yeah, Pop definitely. I mean, Chrome like pretty much killed the good quality, and it seems like people are also immune to the uh, to the pops. Like they naturally close it, and the blockers like block. Like it's from my experience, uh, it doesn't convert as good as it used to. Definitely, and maybe yeah. it's with the, Maybe the reason uh, that there's a decline in the popularity and the effectiveness of POPs is because the what we talked about earlier, the carrier billing stuff going down due to regulation. You know, there's the, there's not that much opportunity because before you could do like a zero click carrier billing thing where you would pop it in the back and it would convert, you know, like or they would have to press a play button or something and it would give you a conversion. You know, that's because they had these... Uh, carriers uh, like in South Africa, like in South African ZA and in Italy and in these other places that fuck people are making millions like the bid price for pops was huge like in every country that the carrier billing was killing you would see that the the price for one pop-up would be like five times more than in a tier one geo you know and you'd be like what the hell and that's the reason is that that there was a carrier there that was printing money Mm -hmm. so yeah it definitely like ian said it definitely the quality went down and that's because the opportunities have ceased exist existing because of uh, new regulations that are carriers yeah even even just google chrome google chrome itself blocks pops in or blocks certain javascript pops right so you lose a bunch of impression and then some networks just turn them into bots right and then they just they just become shit right so like this it's really got pretty, pretty bad. Unless there's two really good partners, you know, I mean, I mean, Firefox, Safari, and Chrome are probably the three biggest ones. I know Chrome for sure has had this huge control on how pops are acting, right? Um, especially like pop unders. And I know a lot of pop networks are going into the interstitial route, right? Taking that pop script and going to the interstitial route, right? Um, so even like, like, for example, push, push going into these interstitial mini pop-ups on websites instead of actually true push now right because of the controlling of how google chrome is uh doing to uh the database so yeah i mean i agree that yeah with push uh it's really changed uh over the last maybe not even even longer than two and three years because uh we've been actually doing some major cleanups of our traffic uh and uh, after each major cleanup, we get rid of a big part of our inventory uh, just to get rid of those uh, really bad uh, quality sources. And, and after that, we actually see an increase. The, 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 the traffic becomes more expensive and there is uh, fewer of it. The, the inventory gets smaller, but, uh, but it actually gets uh, better quality. But yes, it's completely different uh, when it comes to buying pop than it was like uh, five years ago, let's say. I mean, that's why they cost like 0 0.001, right? <laughs> okay, uh, another question uh, from Anonymous this time. What are, your, what are your thoughts on borrowing campaigns from Atplexity? Uh, where, where I'm going with this is that I don't believe that, uh, that this could possibly work or be sustainable. I see a lot of people trying to rip and run and they don't seem to last long. My guess is that you need to retarget or and or develop a list. Can Reaper and Run cold traffic camp campaigns possibly work? Um, I'll say I'll say yes and no, right? So there's a reason why I don't mind sharing a lot of knowledge is because my ad spend to your to somebody I'm, I'm meeting uh, that might be a newbie, you need to reach a certain ad spend to actually get a certain amount of conversions, right? Um, and what you see on Atlexity, on Antrax, and all these other spy tools is that sometimes that if they're going for weeks at times and months, they already reach a certain threshold where the uh, ad impressions to conversions already cross, and that's that's the sticking point to it. So, yes, it can work if you do it what you just said, where you do an internal lead gen, um, create your own lead gen that with similarity to the offer that you're uh, you're copying. But in the end, it kind of doesn't work, kind of does not work 
in, in true retrospect, right? If you really want to start cheap, then it's not going to work. But if you want to just rip and run and, and like double the CPC and just get them out and beat the other person's uh, CPC bidding, then yeah, it might be a possibility. But with your budget versus their budget, you know, I mean, you might last one or two days versus he doesn't mind losing a day of campaigns, right, to this one person. So it becomes a bidding war in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, just to speed this up, maybe because we have a lot of questions coming in, uh, move on to another one from Alexander this time. Uh, maybe let's uh, let's ask it to Attila. Uh, where should I start, and how many traffic sources do you guys use? Uh, I have multiple offers: crypto, uh, ecom, Nutra, Sweeps, Legion, different traffic sources, Push Native, uh, Facebook, uh, different uh, CPA networks, Matrix, Verve Direct, Big Bang Ads. Uh, over a thousand combinations. So, what, which traffic sources do you use, Attila? Okay, well, <laughs> basically Google and Facebook, but my personal favorite because we do a lot of lead gen is Facebook, financial lead gen. Facebook is the best. White hat lead gen, we do a lot of that. Also, Facebook. Google is good for e com, and native is good for e com, and then retargeting people uh, through every means possible, like SMS traffic and also email and uh, push as well by building your own push database, like uh, when you're running any of these offers. How people are doing that is when they get to the lander, they have to press like, are you human? Yes, no. And then when they press yes, then they opt into a push database. Now, another thing like for the more uh, shadier offers that you cannot run without getting banned. That's when I go to uh, traffic sources like Zero Park, Propeller Ads, like these two are the best in the push space. And then there is also MGID and Rev Content in native that we like to use. That's for Nutra and like more aggressive crypto stuff. And yeah, so like sweepstakes, like for. Uh, for push, my two favorites are dating niche and also like uh, lead gen because it's really good for push just because people get like a notification. And then if uh, you target your ads to speak to the person, like what the um, offer is about and what they have to do, then you're going to get the audience through your angle that you want so that the lead quality is not going to suck basically. Like, uh, for example, for the book that I wrote, like I said, attention affiliate marketers, grab your free copy, cof uh, copy, sorry, and uh, or interested in affiliate marketing, you know, download this for free. Like I didn't say free download, grab this book, you know, because that would get me people who don't even know what the hell affiliate marketing is. So I'm surprised you're not getting banned for saying the word free too on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Fuck, man, on, on Facebook, you get banned if you say the word you, you know, like people <laughs> born before 1975 insta ban. Like you cannot call out people's whatever. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. All right. Anyway, so, uh, we, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to add, going back to the original question is do not try and run too many niches. Instead, pick maximum two and specialize because if you try and do everything you're gonna suck at all of them you know like we do lead gen and e-com mostly and we know exactly what kind of kpis like for example what kind of lander ctr we need what kind of lead to conversion ratio and like all these numbers so we know after spending the minimum required amount on a placement is it going to be good or it's not going to be good because we have experience so we can see, you know, that's why you don't want to run like everything, like pick, pick two and then stick to it. And then start out on one traffic source, like on zero park, I would pick dating. That would be one of them and sweeps the other, because if you don't believe me, then just fire up Anstrax or Atlexity and look up zero park. I mean, select the traffic source zero park and see, uh, which ones get the most traffic, which offers, and you'll see it's dating and sweep. So that the data all, never lies. It always tells the truth. Like that's the only thing that you should go by and then start with, with those two verticals, so zero part, because 
the guys are super helpful so they can give you you know like the top 10 sources to start on because they're just going to see like okay people that run sweeps are running on these sources so here just start here don't kill yourself by running a true run of network which is basically thousands of sources you know and you would need a million dollars to clean out all of them basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, moving on to a question from adam um i made some money in affiliate marketing with direct linking carrier billing offers and pops my daily spendings are at about 200 300 dollars uh, I would like to improve my earnings. Uh, what would you recommend to me? Uh, stay with the same vertical and just send more volume or what? Oh, these questions are so again, general in general. Um, I don't know. It, it depends, right? I mean, if you're already doing, if you're doing profitable, I mean, you can definitely scale on other networks. Are you able to, the next question would be like, are you able to scale the same exact campaign on all the pop networks? Can you move it to push? Can you turn it into a redirect traffic source, right? I mean, I don't know, I don't know how to answer it. It's, it's, it's very, very generic, right? So I have too many questions to really actively dig deep into it, right? If you want to move it into another offer, can you figure out the your vertical or the carry building? Do you know some type of audience? Can you basically feed them another offer that they might be interested in? Are you collecting leads? Can you survey that audience? So then you can email them offers later on and then retarget those based on the clicks. Uh, there's, there's so many things to, to go with that, right? So I think if you give, if you give me be more specific on it, then I can give you a much, much better answer. Yeah, Adam, if you want to follow up on your question, just type it down. Um, okay, uh, another question from Anonymous. Um, what are the current hottest verticals for you? for native and push respectively. Uh, would you suggest native or over push as an e easier traffic source for say, neutral cash on delivery? Uh, it seems that many verticals work well on these traffic types. My idea based on months of running campaigns for push, for push software dating, software and dating, adult cash on delivery and for native and neutral cash on delivery. Let me know what you think. So I've ran international native cash and delivery and it works fine. I ran mostly on MGID. Um, so it really depends on payout to, you know, the CPCs and the volume you're getting, how can you scale across uh, vertically versus horizontally. Um, so some network to allow you to pixelate, uh, like I know like Red Pond, they have some sort of retargeting where you can buy stuff on push and then we target that click through and then put, find them again on rep content or, or whatnot. Right, so um, the strategy very can be very very different per country. Uh, I know for Vietnam, only certain offers will work, but the volume is just constantly increasing uh, daily there. Specifically, same thing with the Philippines and Thailand. Philippine dating uh, only trying to target maybe just mainly women on the CPC side for push, right? And then that was easily scalable outside um, the push networks. So. It's just, it's just a lot to really do. I think it's more focusing on what can you do with the one offer, like I was saying prior, and how can you expand on it? I mean, uh, the most the basic strategy you want to do is CPC to payout, and it's how can you scale? That's basically what you kind of want to do. Mm -hmm. Question to Attila directly from Marcus. Uh, how do you warm up a fresh ad account these days on Facebook? That's something that he can learn on imaffiliate.com because publicly <laughs> Same with Black. we're not going to post. <laughs> All right, you heard the man. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, an interesting question. Uh, going back to your history, uh, how, how, how did you guys earn your first dollar uh, in affiliate marketing? Ian, go uh, ahead, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Well, do I do I like to talk? Damn. Yeah, um, my first dollar was actually not in affiliate marketing. It was actually selling digital products. Uh, I actually sold a ebook in a forum on how to use a Samsung blackjack phone, and from then on, I was doing pretty good. And then the other part was my eBay days. I was doing very good as a reseller, but I still had my two jobs, and then I was trying to figure out how do I have an online business without any customers. And that's how I found affiliate marketing. And back in the day, a Zoogle ads was the one um, that actually helped me got to $1,000 a week and then $1,000 a day 
uh, in the span of just uh, three months, right? And they really helped me. They basically just handed me the campaign and gave me the exact campaign on Google. And here they told me like, here, uh, just put a hundred dollars on it and we'll pay you pretty quickly once you show it to uh, campaign converting uh, on it. And they were doing it like that. But back in the day, that was just so, so easy. So for me, it was a financial, it was a uh, tax offer long form submit. And I think it was like paying 17 to $20. So it was like 10 questions per three page submit, right? So that was my first one. Adila? My first uh, dollar in affiliate marketing was when I created my first blog because I, I started an adult, right, on gfy.com. And my first blog that I ever made was a really strange ass niche because when I got into it, I read that the more strange a niche is in adult, the less competition and the easier it is. And it was about like vintage porn that I made the first one. So it was like, you know, like really old from the 1960s and 1970s. The blog was called oldschooladult.com. And I remember I made uh, like, I think it was 10 posts first with a bunch of pictures and links to like the, the pay site. And I made 20, 29.95 uh, four days later. That was the first. And this was in 2008. So that was the first, you know, like uh, recent experience. But many, many years ago, uh, when I didn't even know what the hell I was doing, um, I made money online back in the two, like early 2000s, like end of 1990s, uh, promoting something called All Advantage. If you Google it or the guys that are old enough, they know what this is. It's basically where uh, you had, um, you had like, you, you got paid for clicking and looking at banners, you know, and stuff like that. So what I did is I learned on these Black Hat forums that there was someone developed a software which would click on this banner so you could just have it open and have your dial-up connection live. And then I made like $3,000 when I was in grade 10 in high school doing this trick. So that was my first money, but I didn't know it was affiliate back then. So I consider my first real affiliate when, in 2008 when I started you know, creating a blog network in the adult industry. And that was that. And the first money that I made with paid traffic was also in adult, but adult dating that I promoted on traffic or traffic junkie. So that was a long time ago now, but yeah, mm -hmm. that was my first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for sharing those stories. Uh, question, a specific question from Brian. Um, is it okay to click funnels as a pre-lender versus HTML on AWS? Uh, I hate click funnels, first of all. Um, but click funnels is definitely easy. If you want to scale, take it off click funnels, right? Because click funnels is like they, they double encrypt their pages and because they don't, they hate copy, uh, copiers, uh, of the landing pages or for their clients or whatnot. So it actually takes like seven seconds. If you're on mobile, it doesn't really work that well or that fast, especially trying to do an internal lead gen. Um, so if you want to scale, take it off ClickFunnels and do an HTML and just go on Vulture, right? Or DigitalOcean, right? So it'll be much, much better for you. But if you want to start off and just test, sure. But I wouldn't recommend it once you start scaling, start spending big cash on traffic. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ian. Uh, Anonymous asking, uh, would you suggest to keep running offers on native and push or is it a good idea to run Facebook these days? Uh, since there are massive bans but these past few months, but it seems big, uh, it seems like big affiliates are banking mainly on Facebook, not that much on other sources. Well, here's the thing. Uh, in order to make big bucks on Facebook, you need to have big deep pockets because the big affiliates that you hear about, uh, what you don't know is that they are the guys that are spending monthly twenty to $50,000 just on an account system meaning like a team of 20, 30 people that are, you know, setting up rental accounts, setting up farming accounts and just getting accounts ready so that they can blank at launch campaigns. So they spend, yeah, as much as $50,000 on the system without making any money. So that's minus every single month. And unless you have deep pockets to have a shit ton of accounts, 
uh, it's not really a uh, good playing field. That's why I personally recommend for new people, you know, to go on traffic sources like Zero Park, Propeller Ads, and in the native world, Rev Content and MGID because they are more open to more of the affiliate type of offers, whereas Facebook and Google are extremely anti-affiliate. And that's why you need to have a lot of infrastructure. And that's why a lot of the big guys that you hear about have big teams behind them by teams, not guys that they share the profit with, but people that are on payroll, or people that, you know, they hire and they give them like a job and a career and they pay them every single month. So like fixed salaries. So it, it requires a lot of, you know, organization systems and investments. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Atila. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Uh, so we have about 10 minutes left before we want to wrap this up. And so I'm going to just pick some of the questions uh, and we'll make sure to send you some answers for those that are unanswered. For example, Brandon is asking a lot about tracking, uh, but these are pretty uh, long answers probably uh, and, and onto this pretty basic topic though. So we'll try to explain uh, uh, through email afterwards. Uh, and now let's move on to Abdullah's questions to Attila about dating SOI offer. Um, is it good for push? Uh, because people say that push, push is low quality. What's your recommendation? Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, push is low quality when you run shitty angles. That's why you have to target your ad so that you get the kind of traffic or people signing up or filling out the forms that the advertiser want. And there's this misconception that, oh, you got to do SOI because it's single opt-in and they don't have to confirm. One thing that people who never ran dating or don't run dating don't realize is people that are going to fill out the initial landing page, they want to fuck chicks. They want to get laid. You know what I mean? So if they have to confirm, they're going to fucking confirm. And there you go. That's already double the revenue that you get paid. So I personally, we never run SOI because why? Like most of the people, I'd say 90% are going to click on that verify yourself that you want to receive messages link anyways. So, so yeah, so to recap and to answer the question in short, write angles that uh, give you the kind of audience or leads that the advertiser wants and and go for DOI because it's going to give you higher revenues, basically, which allows you to bid more and get more of the best quality traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Atila. Uh, okay, let's pick another question here. Uh, so Anonymous is asking about best strategies for finance like IQ option. Uh, does it take a lot of money to invest uh, and does it convert? I mean, I haven't personally ran IQ options, but I can talk on the crypto side. It does take a lot, but uh, the strategy that I use is to landing page, to email, to offer. So over time, it does work better. And also, if you're good with advertiser or network, you can work on a rev share model, right? So the rev share model actually does pay out much, much better uh, in the past that I've had uh, that I've done than getting a fixed CPA of like 500 to $700 um, over time. So I think you just have to either have a good relationship with the advertiser, have a really good strategy of um, sending emails every day because on, other, on the other end, the casino or the crypto or the binary, they'll, they'll send emails as well. So you just gotta make sure you guys can uh, be on top of their email game as well. You know what I mean? But just not over spamming. Mm -hmm. uh Another question from Anonymous. Uh, when testing ads, do you prefer to start with one, uh, with one um, using one message and test icon images, then cut out bad images, uh, and then second, um, use best Im images uh, and test messages? OK, this is uh, a bit difficult to understand. So OK, I understand what he wants to ask. Yeah. You use the same image and you test five headlines first. And then after you have the top two headlines, then you start testing images. Mm -hmm. And uh, a follow up question about uh, pre lenders to offers. Uh, do you prefer to use them or not? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> there you go, answered. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You need, like, you, you need, you need freelancers nowadays. Yeah, you definitely need freelancers nowadays. Back in the day, I used to, I used to direct link, but now you definitely need to have them. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Javier, we had already a question about uh, the lowest budgets uh, to test. So, uh, if you missed that out, there will be recording coming up tomorrow. Um, Interesting question from Andre. Uh, many many networks offering now different auto optimization algorithms. Uh, is it really that useful, or just another way for networks to sell us more traffic? Oh man, I mean, <laughs> I don't I mean, like it personally. We don't we don't yeah, have that. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're the auto optimizing tool. I don't know if you know your math. Then it kind of works, but some network they just it just doesn't work properly, you know what I mean? Uh, I just use a Google Google Sheet on my end. I, I export I export the data, and then it just tells me what to uh, get rid of or to increase my bids on. But that's just based on my mathematical experience uh, through my campaigns, right? Obviously, they want to sell you it, but they also want you to spend high too. So it goes both ways. I haven't seen it beneficial on my end at times. Even though I use like a an external tool, so. Okay, uh, another question from Alexander: uh, What service do you use for building a push database? Do you have a push database, to you? I mean, for my blog, it's about it. But to grow my own database for traffic, I personally do not. Okay, so I use two for the blog open signal and for. Uh, for our own stuff, there's actually a tutorial again on I am affiliate, which uses Firebase basically. So that's by Google. So you can create your own push database and it's the most cost effective way to go. Like there's an advanced tutorial on how to do this and then you can include it in all the landers. And then there's like an interface that you can just blast messages from basically to your database. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple of final questions. Uh, first one from Sadiq. Uh, <clears throat> what type of affiliate offers uh, work good and are most uh, suitable for Facebook? Just fire up your spy tool, Visto or Magic Ads, rest in peace. But yeah, Visto is the only one that's around now. And then just look and see which what's running, you know, affiliate offers. Right now you can sign up for a free account and yeah, so visto.li is where you wanna go. Okay, uh, so there's your answer, Sadiq. And final question of the day from Luke Matthews. Uh, is push traffic good for trial neutral offers such as Testo and Mail Enhancement and Keto? Uh, if not, what's the best traffic source for those types of offers with, which have payouts of 30, uh, 30 and $60 uh, sorry, and 30 and 30 dollars for S1 and S2 conversions. Uh, Ian, maybe you're as an expert in Nutra. So the strategy that I would do is lead gen uh, to offer and then follow up with email, right? Just because, you can, and then the best part is in your redirect link, uh, you can pixel that as an event and then retarget them th through a cleaner page through Facebook, uh, not being so aggressive. Uh, that's a strategy that I cur uh, I've used in the past. Uh, buying cheap traffic from pops redirects and and push so this way uh any actionable happens like especially like the lead gen like through your own email opt-ins you can tag us as, as a lead uh as a lead event in facebook and then start creating your picks your audience through that and then uh retargeting them through facebook in, in that aspect through a cleaner cleaner page for sure mm -hmm. attila you want to expand on this uh, yeah, like I think push is good because most of the push, if you were to like survey the uh, people that respond to push ads, I'd say 80% is male for some reason. I don't know why. So because dating does good, all kinds of male offers are going to be do good. Basically, if you go to an adult site like X Hamster or Pornhub or whatever, take a look at what kind of offers are on those sites and try those on push because most of the time, those are the type of offers that are matching the demographics on push. You still should add on that. 
So one super trick for, for dating is that if you go to a country with more females looking for, uh, then you it's better to use uh, male uh, male creatives for those female audiences because there's going to be more. Like for example, countries that don't sexually educate their their, their kids, right? And these people grow up don't don't have any sex uh, sex education. You can easily target these people because they go to Pornhub to sexually educate themselves, to sex to get sex education. So so you know there's I mean? some countries where there's like hot chicks browsing Pornhub and stuff, and then looking at oh ads. man, yeah, oh it's damn, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to convert. Because I was I was curious one time on. Uh, Cause I, since I've traveled Southeast Asia and I, I've noticed this. Like, oh really? Let me let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, yeah. Let me flip it. Let me flip it around. You know. So I mean, just just me traveling. You know. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so good idea, actually. I mean, in, that's true. Actually, like in Ukraine, for example, there's way more chicks than there's guys. So that's one of the geos for sure. Like they actually have trouble finding husbands in Ukraine. Like it's a fact. Like if you look read read online on Wikipedia, stuff like that. So that's a good one, Ian. Actually, it's really good. I, I want to bring some value. <laughs> I want. I wonder if there's actually uh, some sites that are just for women. You know, like if you were to check their uh, like similar web makeup, it would be like the traffic stats. You know, instead of being eighty percent male, it would like whoosh, like this. You know, like eighty yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah like whoa <laughs> the only problem it, it is hard is sometimes these uh, dating offers they're yeah. very strictly men so yeah. you have to really work with a network or an advertiser like hey can i get a, a female specific lander that's the only difference uh, hey that's really, really cool i mean you don't often hear that so that's super good tip actually guys sure. yeah <laughs> ian the man ian the man <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on that note, let's wrap things up. Uh, thanks everyone for your questions. And thank you, Ian, for being with us today. Thanks for having Not me, yet. for sure. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. It's been great. Thank you, guys. And thanks. And have a great Christmas and holidays. Cheers. See you, hey. everybody. And Bye. join thanks, I am guys. affiliate. Join I am affiliate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last thank you guys. Thank you. See you. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye-bye.